Shandon, mate, how's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, um, good. You're smiling, you look like a man that's in, enjoying his football at the moment. Yeah, yeah you know, everything, everything's going good. You know, I'm starting games, I'm playing, I'm playing 90 minutes, so I can't complain. It's a blessing to, to start a game and finish a game without getting injured. So, yeah, loving, loving life right now. And it, it hasn't always been straightforward, it hasn't always been great and, and an easy path. So, I hope you don't mind, but I think yours is a story that's really inspirational and a lot of people can learn from. You've mm -hmm. shown grit, desire, determination, you've had knockbacks, but you've always come through. So is it alright to have a little chat about kind of yeah. your journey, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. It's, it's a long one, though, yeah. <laughs> so, so going back to the start, growing up in Reading, right, and I imagine like a lot of the lads, I take it you was the best footballer out of you and your mates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I had quite a good mate, so our, our little circle was quite good, but yeah, I'll probably say I was the better one. What was the dream then for you when, when you were growing up? To be a footballer. Yeah. Um, just like. Did you set a here. goal? Like. I think yeah, make it to the Premier League. It's a it's a blessing to achieve that. But when you where I was, that seemed like a very very long way away. Let's get into that journey a bit. So then you, you join Reading. When did the, what age did they pick you up? Seven. Seven. Wow. Yeah. So you yes. were mustered at seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> and then you you play with them until you, you're fifteen, and then. Yeah. You got let go at Reading, and that's a lot for someone at 15 mm -hmm. to take. Did they give you a reason or anything like that? Yeah, they said I was too small. No, yeah, yeah, at 15 small. they're saying yeah. already you're too small to yeah. feel. So yeah. how did you take that? It was hard. Like I, feel, I remember coming out there crying. Really? Um, it's hard to take, man, because especially at that time, that's when Reading they were going cat one, and like. I think a couple of months before that we were looking at schools because you know where the academy is now, they put all the players in in the same school so they get the same education and stuff. So and here they're think and I'm thinking, yeah, lovely, you know, I'm gonna be in school with, you know, my mates, it's yeah. gonna be good. I'm gonna go on and get a, a two another two year contract and then get a scholar and, and all of this and then you know you go in there and meet and then they say you're yeah, they're releasing you for, for being too small. And it's like, I think it hurts harder because it's something that you can't affect. Like I can't go and grow, I don't know, six inches tomorrow. Yeah. That's gonna take time. Um, so yeah, it was hard to take, but I think the biggest thing of what helped is that I had good family around me. I had two uh, older brother, older cousins um, that kept me grounded, kept me just knowing my worth, if that makes sense. And just even my mum, my sisters, Everyone just helped to, to keep that hunger to keep on, on playing inside me. So at that point there was no, all oh, right, that's probably the dream over. Were you thinking, no, nah, no, nah, I want to prove these lot wrong? And was it just pick yourself up and go again kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like that. But it was weird as well because obviously after that, I just went into Sunday League football. I, was, yeah, I, I call it Sunday League football, but I was just playing with my friends on a, on a Saturday. And a, well, I was playing Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, just like kind of, Finding that enjoyment, you know, because you, when you get released, you kind of, you don't really like playing football no more and it's not really that enjoyable. So going and playing with my friends and stuff, it just brought back the enjoyment because, you know, you're beating teams like 25-0, 30-0, no, like yeah. it's, it's just scoring goals, having fun, so. But are you, not, are you thinking at this point, I need to get back into a pro club here or were you just like, or are people around you going, Shandon, mate, come on, what are you doing playing with us? Nah, nah, honestly, nah. I did think like that, I'd said, because, because I, like, a lot of people that know this is, like, I was going on the internet and searching in trials for football clubs and trying to email different clubs and all these things, because, again, I didn't know about agents, I didn't know about all these different things. Like, when I got released, obviously, the closest club was, like, Oxford. I didn't really know that there was a... I didn't really, I'd never heard of Otso before. And then at the time it was coming up, so I would click on it, try to email them. A lot of times I never heard, I didn't hear anything back. I wanted to get back into it, but I didn't know how to get back into it. So in my head, that was the only way yeah. that I could think about to get back into it. So yeah, but after a while, I was just kind of like, ah, it's not working. So I'm just playing with my friends. And so how did it come about then to go to Oxford? When I finished school, my friend at the time was at JMA and he was, he was going there because it's like a football college. You you do football and sixth form at the same time. Yeah. He was like, come along, obviously, see what, if you like it, if you like it, you can come. The coach there is also under 16's coach. So then he got me a trial. I went once. I, I played a game at the end of the season, at the end of my first season at JMA. The coach there was like, 
nah, they're not really feeling me. And then luckily, again, the coach at Germany he stuck his back up for me and was just like, you can't judge someone off one game. So then I went back for a week's trial and then after the week's trial, they offered me a, a scholar. That's amazing. So, so you're there at Oxford, you've got the scholarship. And then you get another setback where you get two dislocated shoulder injuries, right? And this is around a time where they're looking at who to give pro deals. So mm -hmm. what are your emotions then? The kind of, you got, you've, you've beaten that first knockback of being released by Reading, you've got yourself back in, and then you're injured during a time where they're making a big decision. So how does that feel for you? Hey, it, was, it was hard, man, because I had to make a decision because before, they said they would give me a pro because it was a choice between having an operation or not. So I was thinking to myself, do I have an operation and just play through it and hopefully it doesn't dislocate and they still offer me a pro? Or do I take this operation, be out for six months and potentially be without a club and trying to, to fight my way back into the pro game? Luckily before that, I had to make that decision. They came to me, we sat down with the manager at the time, he was Michael Appleton and they they offered me a, a six month contract and that allowed me the time to ha obviously have my, the operation and just get back fit and you know just don't have that worry because I was stressed, like I can't lie, I was stressing, I was, I was down because I was thinking I've, I've worked this hard to, to try to get back into the game you know and I'm here and it's the final decision and you know I'm going to be let down because I, I've got to have, a, I'm got to be out of the game for six months so yeah, luckily they, they took their chance on it. I get it, it's something that you're not in control of. You, do you mean, yeah. you, you're not, you, you can't control what mm. happens there. And well then, obviously they, they give you the deal that you say and you make a couple of appearances in the EFL trophy. Then I saw you went on loan to, to Hampton Richmond near here, club mm -hmm. close to Brentford. Yeah, yeah. When you made those two appearances, you just thinking, oh, I've got to get out now, I've played, I've played first team for what I need to play. Or are you, are you thinking, no, nah, no, nah, I want to get in the team here. How do you make that? I think it was, it's one of those ones. I did want to try and break into the team, but at that time, to be fair, we had a, a good side and it was hard. Obviously those two appearances were good and you know, it made me work harder. But after a while, when it got to about January, I said to myself, yeah, I think it's time to, to go out and play games because without playing games, no one's going to see what you can do. The manager's not going to be able to see because I was just training for six months and not really getting in squads and stuff. So yeah, at that time, at January, I just said to myself, yeah, let me go out and learn and, yeah. and try try to get somewhere and play some games. So you play yeah. in Continental South and it's just upward curve now. I know you missed out in the playoffs at, at Hampton, yeah. but then you go back to Oxford, you're playing games again, you're doing really well. And then mate, you get another knockback yeah, and yeah. your ACL goes mm -hmm. against us. Mm -hmm. And there, there was a, a few times that you've had to fight these knockbacks and Again, every time it looks like you're pushing on, you're getting a little setback. So, how do you deal with these injuries? Because it's the thing that people say is the hardest thing for a footballer. Um, and does it get any easier? I wouldn't say it doesn't get any easier because realistically, all you want to do is just play. Every footballer just wants to play, so it doesn't ever get any easier. How do you deal with it? I know because everyone's different. I'm like, I'm a chilled, laid back guy, and I just try to take things in my stride and try to take it all with me and, and, and roll with it, kind of. You, you say you're chilled out, mate, right? Yeah, there must, you, you, that's a fight, do you see what I mean? Mm, you, mm. If, if you're really chilled out, you just go, oh, yeah, you, you, I'm you done, leave it. do you know what I mean? Like, but you didn't, you've kept going, no, no, no. Someone told me I, I was too small, mm -hmm. I'm not having it. Then I, I could have lost out, but when I had my dislocated shoulder, yeah, I'm not having it. Yeah, yeah. Then you've got this, you could easily have gone, do you know what I mean? So where's that coming from? For me, I think it's just like, what do you play the game for, if that makes sense? I, honestly, I play the game because I just love the game of football and I just want to play and show people what I can do. Every time I get injured, I'm just fighting to try and get back and, and just play. And because I know and in myself, I believe and I know where I can take myself and what I can do. So that's what keeps me, me going. That's what keeps me fighting. Obviously, I think for other people, that reason might be different, but whatever that reason is, is what is allowing them to get injured and come back stronger. Because it's hard to get injured and keep coming back stronger and keep fighting to, to get a place. Because, you know, once you, as I said, I was injured for eight, nine months last season, 
But the people in front of me, they're going, they keep on going while I'm still here trying to get back. So, you know, it's, it's all, it's hard, but I think, yeah, you just kind of got to roll with it. You got to take it in your stride and because there's nothing you can do. Once you're injured, you, there's two things. You can either sulk or fight and make yourself stronger so it doesn't happen again. Well, look, they say cream rises to the top, mate, and that's what's happened here. Yeah, exactly. See what I mean? And not only are you coming back, so a lot of players will come back from injury and they're happy with that. Each time you've come back, you've pushed on another level, which I think is another really admirable thing. But we were kind of saying this before we started. There's a lot of parallels, isn't there, with Brentford's story and your story in the, the knockbacks and the things like that. Do you see that? Do you feel that's another perfect fit for you with this club as well? Because it's a journey to the Premier League that you've, we've both gone on. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and I think that's why players that come from nothing, shall I say, and and get to Brentford and this, yeah, as you said, there's just something that fits so well because in a way everyone understands each other because it's two people that are coming up from the bottom and making their way to the to the top. So, and that's why it's such a family club because there's no one here that is bigger than the club. There's no one here, the club is not bigger than um, the players and the staff and the, the people that make this, this club run. So yeah, it all is in one. And do you think that, that's what makes you as a group so special? Because again, it's not just yourself that's had these knockbacks. Ivan's been told he's gone to the Premier League and he's been told he's by whoever, maybe he's not right for it then and he's gone and proved them wrong. Or There's, there's so many, Ethan's been released by Mill and dropped down mm. as well. Do you think that's why, what brings you as a squad together as well and makes you so special because you've all gone through that stuff? Oh, definitely, man, because everyone's had a fight and is still fighting to, to get where they want to be. And I think if you ask any of us here, I think that fight was to get to the, the Premier League. But what's good about all of us here is that we're not just content with being here now. We want to be here for years to come. We want to keep the club here um, for, for years to come. So I think just that, that hunger everyone had to, to get here is not what is allowing us to have such a, a good season as the people are seeing because you know we're we're not just settling for yeah okay using the Premier League for one season we want to keep the club here for for years to come. Mate, you've done it. You've got to Premier League. So I know you've got. You're not content. Yeah. You want to keep going. But when you look back, that young kid playing football in Reading, now you're playing the Premier League. Not only that, you scored your first Premier League goal. Did it feel everything that you expected it would? Yeah, like, it's crazy, it's crazy to think, like, uh, when I scored it and I got home that day, I was like sitting there, I was thinking, like, all the hard work that I put in, you know, all the setbacks is, is worth it to get to a point where, you know, I can score my first goal and, you know, you can, I can genuinely say, you know, I scored a, a goal in the a, in a Premier League, so, yeah, massive, massive feeling, great feeling. Great for, moment for me and my family because again, without them, I wouldn't be here. So, yeah, man, just 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 a good feeling. Oh, mate, look, I'm sure there's loads more to come, and yeah, I'm just I'm well chuffed for you, mate, yeah, because I've you. seen it out here. No, thank you. The graft that you've been putting in, mate. So, no, I appreciate it, Steve. Thank you. Cheers.